an important economic story that's happening today and really every day, which is an additional 1 million Americans filed for unemployment last week. That was after two, that's two consecutive weeks where the number has re remained above a million. Recall that three weeks ago, people were kind of excited because the number was like 987,000. Right. So <laughs> it's bad. Um, and I think the Times headline really says it all, which is that unemployment claims are, quote, stubbornly high. And that the real issue here is that there is a staggering number of job loss which is happening week by week in America. And the biggest problem with these job losses is that they are most likely to be permanent. Right. Think about where we are right now. If you've held on for six months, you tried to make it work, you had you know PPP, maybe that ended, you had the little bump in May where you know, maybe we were gonna reopen, all that. At this point, it's close up shop. This is not temporary unemployment claims, and these things last for years and years. You can right. look at the Great Recession data about how hard it is to bring back you know, long-term unemployment. At the same time, unemployment claims, unemployment itself has dropped to that 300 a week level under the federal, the president's um, executive order. And so this is just a terrible situation. Well, and I mean, that's, even that is really overstating the case because there's only, to my knowledge, last I checked, this was like two days ago, there were only yeah. two states that had actually implemented that benefit. Yeah. So, so for all intents doing? and purposes, right. that un additional unemployment amount has ended. Um, there are some, 30 states have, and this is again from two days ago data, 30 states have been approved for the program. Two have actually implemented at the $300 level, not the 400 that it was billed yeah. at, because that extra 100 has to come from the states. And there are only a handful more that are anywhere close to being able to implement it, which, uh, and really this also rebuts uh, an economic claim that we were hearing from Kudlow and other people oh, yeah. like him, which is that the real problem was that people were just lazy and they were happy to collect their checks. And so there were plenty of jobs available to them if they just got off the dole. Well, there is no more dole, right? It yeah. ended at the end of July, almost a month ago now. And guess what? Unemployment claims new in the past week still at a million because surprise, surprise, the problem did not turn out to be that working people just wanted to hang out at home and not go back and get a job. That is not remotely the issue here. So if we can please put that dumb talking point to bed, that would be great. And the fact that we're still looking at these numbers and there is zero movement in terms of any additional stimulus here, essentially everything that had been done before is ended is absolutely unconscionable. And we have some numbers that, again, just show you how broken this economy yep. is into two different pieces. So CEO confidence, 5% higher than it was in January before the pandemic, okay? <laughs> so it's not just back to where it was, it's higher than where it was. Meanwhile, consumer confidence, and we can show this on the graph too, down 30%. And yep. this chart really says it all. And by the way, the numbers I was looking at this week too, that consumer confidence level is the lowest in six years. So while CEOs at the top of big companies are feeling great, Consumers are looking around, looking at their own lives, looking at their pocketbooks, thinking about what the future may hold. And we also covered the numbers of a majority saying the worst is yet to come. And they are seeing a very different picture in front of them. It's just, look, look what I really learned throughout this whole thing, like I have said this before, is how fake the economy is. Because you have the top 20% of Americans who have higher amount of wealth than they did before this thing started. You have actually half of Americans who have saved more money and paid down debt as compared to the other half, which is completely wiped out by what's happening here. Believe CEOs when they tell you why they're confident because they're telling you the truth. Most working class Americans are not their customers. The entire economy is not geared towards their consumption. It is only geared towards the consumption and the wants and the needs of the luxury class of the top 20%, mm -hmm. which is now you actually have a stock market, you have an economy, you have an entire society which does not rely on the majority of its citizens in order to produce goods or consume goods. That's insane. And that's, that's what we're living in right now. Sad. That's why you can have consumer confidence at sub 30 right and CEO confidence that gulf it's not it's not actually people are like oh it's delusional there's gonna be a crash no believe them they're right they know what they're talking about whenever it comes to this case they know who their customers are well and not only that but when you have so many small businesses closing yeah exactly. good for Amazon so it's great it's good for Walmart yeah. good for the big guys right 
I also saw numbers, and this is also deeply troubling, of like the stocks that are doing the best and the companies that are performing the best right now are the ones who employ the fewest people. Yes. So the ones that are least dependent on actual human beings going and earning a yeah. li- living right. in their services, mostly tech companies, those are the ones that are doing the most. The ones who actually have to employ human beings and rely on their labor are performing the worst overall in the stock market and also for their overall performance. So another troubling indicator of how you know, this society isn't actually set up to benefit its people. I mean, that's what it really that's comes true. down to. It's just you look at this on a macro level and you're like, what are we even, what's our goal here? What are we doing as a society? Who are we trying to please? Who are we trying to support? Who are we trying to help? Like, what are we doing all this for? And when you see these numbers, it becomes patently clear that any illusion of, like, we've got this all set up to benefit you is completely oh, yeah. false. Well, you know who we're working for. Let's throw this up. The $200 billion man. He became, he's mm. officially worth Congrats, $200 Jeff. billion. Elon Musk worth $100 billion. I wouldn't take that one as seriously because there's, like, this weird thing going on with Tesla stock right now. But Yeah, we've got to talk about that yeah. in a separate segment. <laughs> I, need to, I, I need the answers. I'll get it on a stock analyst. to. Be, I don't know what the hell is going on. Yeah. Ask Dave Portnoy. He seems to know. Okay, but so $200 billion man with Amazon's Jeff Bezos, almost entirely from Amazon stock. Amazon stock began at the pandemic at $1,700. Let's check it right now. And it is $3,400. So literally double in price what it was, a 100% increase over the last six months. Cool. Okay. How yeah. are you doing? Um, Did people, wealth go up 100%? Not everyone yeah. is taking too kindly to this. We have uh, protests. We're actually Chris Smalls, who we've talked about here, we've interviewed here. He's an organizer, former Amazon worker. He's fired for his activist efforts. Amazon would dispute that, of course. Um, yeah, protesters outside of Jeff Bezos' mm. home right now building a guillotine. Um, so that is the mood among a lot of working people, in particular people who have worked for Amazon. We've covered here, too, some of the incredibly harsh conditions that workers are subjected to in Amazon fulfillment centers, which, by the way, may be replacing the stores at your local mall. So all coming to a town near you. Great. Thank you, Jeff. More rising for you after this.